They just didn't want to give me my props. It's okay, Nintendo. It's okay. That's why nobody plays with your Wii. You know what I mean by that. Welcome back to another episode of Family Afro Senpai here. You ever have one of those days where everything is just hectic, crazy, every day we're hustling, like Rick Ross said. So I got to go to the grocery store. I got to mail something. Had to teach online today. Just back to back to back. So what we are going to do, you're going to go with me as I do this episode. Come along with me, friends. First thing we're gonna do, because it might get crazy at the UPS store, we're gonna go <clears throat> mail Google Stadia. Remember, I got that Stadia, got the Buddy Pass, did a little post on Twitter and said, anybody with a good connection and a Chromecast or whatever want the Stadia, first come, first serve. Shout out to Joe Reno who uh, swooped it up. So we're gonna go mail it to him. Turns out he's over in Canada. Nicest guy in the world. Gotta love those Canadians. Oh, 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 no. That's for when we get to Germany, okay? We don't wanna get tagged for copyright infringement. All right, so this episode, I'm gonna walk you through the various um, hustles I've been doing since I was a little kid. And this is gonna segue into a little shout out to kid entrepreneurs in a future episode. Parents, if you have kids right now who, are, who have like a strong interest in one particular thing, let them have at it because that's going to turn into something lucrative for them one day whether you think there's no way they're they're gonna make money off of this there's no way they're, they're wasting their time anything get that out of your head let them absorb themselves into this topic and that's going to relate into a career for them like the old saying goes if you love what you're doing to get money then you never work a day in your life and that's what it's all about. First, one of the earliest memories I have is, I wanna say around fourth grade, maybe third, whatever. I had the idea to make puzzle books, like puzzles, mazes, maybe word searches with a group of friends. I made like one maze, and they didn't do anything, and then nothing ever came of it. <laughs> Fast forward to middle school. I was really passionate about video games. I love gaming. The PS2 came out at the time. And I'm pretty sure I said this before, but grew up with very little money. So going to my mom for like money for a PS2 was not gonna happen. So I didn't even, you know, I didn't even approach that. So I said, I'm just gonna get this PS2 for myself. So what did I do? My mom, gave me $10 on Monday to pay for my $2 lunches throughout the year or throughout the throughout the week, right? And my school served pretty big sandwiches like for a little for for a little kid, right? The sandwiches were about that big. And so I made a deal with my friend. I said, "Listen, if you give me half your sandwich, I will give you $5 a week." So I get five, I get to keep the $5 because my mom gave me 10. I still get to eat because I'm getting half of a sandwich and I'm racking up money that way. So I saved $5 every week. I turned in, once I had enough money, I turned in my PS1 and I was able to buy a PlayStation 2 and a demo disc of games. Remember demo discs? Shout if you know, oh my gosh. 
Hold on, you don't know about this. You don't know, <laughs> you don't know about this. If you are a gamer from the 90s and went with like a PlayStation, you know about demo discs. Oh my gosh, that was the best thing ever. Anyway, we're here at the UPS store, so I'm gonna pause this video. I'm gonna mail this thing. Bing, bang, bang. All right, well, that was fun. We still have the package. Apparently, they are not shipping anything out. I wonder if I can even ship to Canada right now. I'm just putting coronavirus inside the bag and shipping it off. In sixth grade, me and my... Go ahead, yeah, what are you doing? Drive. God. Anyway, me and my friend Nate Murata said, hey, let's go make a shoe. Let's go make a basketball shoe. So the first thing we did, right, was sketch it up. So we drew just like the bottom of the shoe, what it might look like on the side. And then we had to come up with the name. So what do we call it? My name is Domini. His name was Nate. What did we call them? That's right, class. The Dominators. They weren't ready for it. Nike wasn't ready. Nike wasn't ready for that one. Then we figured out that, hey, we don't have any material. We don't have any leather or plastic, so we had to abandon that shoe. We had to just drop that one. And then also, what do we do? <laughs> um, sixth grade again. So we got our lunches, right? We had school lunch. Some people had like regular lunch that they brought from home. But if we didn't like what we had in our lunch, we just swapped it out for, like we would just put it on the table and say like, who wants this? I'll, I'll take your chips, you take my whatevers. We called ourselves the Swindler Brothers. I don't even know why I would know that word at the time. Nobody was swindled. In seventh grade, I had the idea to come up with a video game. So I sketched out what the levels would look like. It was a racing game because I figured that was like the easiest, easiest kind of game to make. So I mapped out all of the levels, like the racetrack. I mapped out from once you started the game to what each scene would look like. You're able to customize your driver. Uh, then I colored it and then I had my mom make copies of it, which now that I think about it probably wasn't, like she could have got fired for that. So thank you, mom. So she made copies of it. I put like copyright, my name and the year and then I sent it off to Nintendo. And then I was thinking like, oh, they're about to pick my game up. I'm about to have so much money. And I was thinking they're gonna, they're about to give me a thousand dollars for this game idea, right? So I got my gaming magazines and newspapers that had games in them. And I was pricing out, okay, I'm gonna get this game. I'm gonna get that game. I'm gonna get this game, yada, yada, yada. So a couple months later, Nintendo writes back to me and it says hey we got your game and it looks yada 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 you know you know you know stuff that they say to kids and they say well we can't really make your game but if you are interested in gaming and becoming a program or anything you should check out our school in Redmond and I was all these mother suckers here yeah. I was so upset and so pissed off that I just threw away, I threw away the game design idea, like a fat stack of papers. I threw, a lab, I threw away the letter that they gave me and I wish, I wish I would have had the foresight to keep that and just show my kids like, look at what I did. Even though nothing came of it, you still put yourself out there and you still try. 
But here's the thing. Here's the thing that Nintendo won't tell you. What did I call it? I called it cruising the coast because you're going everywhere, every which way. And then a year later, what game does Nintendo 64 put out? Mm-hmm. They just didn't want to give me my props. It's okay, Nintendo. It's okay. That's why nobody plays with your Wii. You know what I mean by that? Not the, you know, the gaming, okay? Stop thinking like that. I got one more story for you. Seventh grade. I said, you know what? Making chocolate, making chocolate bars, candy bars, it's not hard. So I said, all right, well, let's go make a candy bar, me and my friends. We got a, like a pie pan, uh, laid uh, foil on it. I don't think my mom knows about this. We put, I think it was like, uh, chocolate chips in it and then some uh, got some walnuts crush those up and then probably put a little milk in there don't quote me on that I don't know if it was I don't know if I put milk in there but I, I feel like I did because I like milk chocolate those three ingredients I put it in the oven it came out as a hot mess I tried it it was disgusting so we had to abandon that idea Snickers wasn't ready for that either Okay, Snickers, you're not ready. Mars, Mars Corporation, you're not ready. But that was, my middle school years were, <laughs> were my last years of like true entrepreneurship. Um, Cause in high school, we, as we know, as I talked about in my, uh, in my other videos, I went through depression in high school. But it really, it really shines a light on your perspective. I can do anything I want in this world. That was my perspective in in middle school but in high school i was thinking well i didn't get what i wanted i'm not at the high school that i wanted so the world sucks now it was so interesting to think back on that and be like i just my mindset is what affected what happened for me so now that we're back in this entrepreneurship phase again the world i can do whatever i want and now I have adult money to do whatever I want. And so that's why I have the plan on, you know, coming up with different businesses for my community, for other communities, and it's gonna be a beautiful thing. I'm way more educated and my head is in the right spot. So I think that's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you everyone for watching. We're gonna go hopefully mail this, we're gonna hopefully mail this Stadia over to Joe. Before we get out of here, leave a comment below. What are some crazy things you did as a kid where you said, oh man, this is gonna take off? Uh, write to me in the comments. Tell me about your entrepreneurship ideas when you were little, because I cannot be the only one on the weather. It looks like the air quality is slowly starting to improve, at least for my area, and hopefully we're gonna just continue to push those winds towards the east so everybody can taste some sweet air again. You guys be good and remember to smile because you are beautiful. Peace. Welcome back to another episode, folks. Afro Senpai here. Nope. Olive. Staring contest. Me and you. <laughs>